All right. Let me just mute here. Hi, everybody. Welcome Robert. to welcome to Emerge Gallery. Uh, my name is Robert Langdon. Oh, hold on. Am I muted? No. Okay, great. Uh, my name is Robert Langdon, and today we are going to be discussing the latest uh, artsy exclusive show called Photographia, and it is a collection of photographs by about 44 different artists in the Hudson Valley, New York metropolitan area, um, and a, a few from elsewhere. Um, and each of the pieces, uh, there's some traditional photographs. I tried to bring in uh, different ways that artists are using photography um, in their work, uh, in some collage. Um, there's some encaustic work um, where, you know, artists in incorporate the, the photography medium in, in with different mediums. Um, I, I really like the way that artists sort of challenge themselves to um, use the medium that they enjoy the best in different ways. Um, so I'm going to present each piece. Uh, it, 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 this isn't at the gallery. It is a, an online exclusive show. The gallery has a shop on artsy.net. Uh, so it's artsy.net backslash emerge hyphen gallery hyphen NY. Um, on there, you can see the photography photographia show uh, you can also see the on the walls in the gallery for another week is something blue. It's a blue theme show. Um, and then also some online exclusives, uh, some solo shows from some artists and um, shows that I've done in the past are all archived on there as well. And, uh, you know, quite a quite a bit of the art is still available from past shows as well. So um, without further ado, um, let's have a look at the, at the artwork. I'm gonna be joined by 14 artists today who are going to be discussing their work. Um, so let's, let's get going. Okay, let me share my screen with you guys. All right, uh, so this is the artsy page, Art, as I said, artsy.net um, uh, backslash emerge hyphen gallery hyphen NY. Uh, so this is the Photographia show. It is a virtual uh, photography exhibit that's going to be um, on exhibit through May 30th. Uh, the first piece that we have, we are going to be joined by um, Joan Barker, uh, I think I, I see you, Joan. Okay, let's Hi. <laughs> pull you up. Hi, everyone. I'm ready. And thank you, Robert, for including my work. You got it. How come I can't spotlight you right here? Hold on. There I am. Okay, great. All right, Joan. So uh, Joan has two pieces in the show. Uh, this is the first, uh, which is called Pair with Orchid. And then the second is Two Shells from Africa. So uh, Joan, take it away. Welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Hi, everyone. I began a still life series in the winter and I didn't want to use traditional backdrop cloth, paper, etc. And I had noticed how beautiful the ice patterns were on windows and puddles, etc. So I noticed also how the plants and the flowers that I'd have, uh, the, they'd fade, the petals would fall. And I'd gather these up along with, in this case, a slice of fruit and put them in ice in a glass uh, baking dish uh, filled with water and bring it outside and let it freeze. And when uh, the water was frozen, sometimes it would freeze and then melt and freeze. It depends on the temperature. I might add things, but the composition was pretty much set when I put it outside. Then I would bring the ice tray in and work in my studio with strobe lights and the lighting just was magnificent in terms of using a macro lens to see the patterns in the ice, the way 
the pollen of a plant might have bled through the water and the ice and the freezing and the colors. Some of the petals were dyed and in, in, the, in some cases there's a blue orchid and um, the petals were blue and they looked like watercolor washes. And it was really quite an entry into a new world of looking at fruit and flowers and preserving them uh, when everything in winter was so dormant, they just seemed alive when with the ice. So that's how I began with the still life. And this one, yes, my this husband and I uh, traveled to Africa and he wanted to dive with tiger sharks. And there's a fellow Mark Addison, who's a naturalist and really cares about sharks and so my husband was diving shallow dive maybe 15 20 feet and i was snorkeling on top and i was looking down and there's beautiful natural buoyancy um, for the two divers and mark and this magnificent 14 foot tiger shark came into the scene and all around me i was surrounded by frenzied black tip sharks who were there for the chum. And there was a moment when I was face to face with a shark who came right up to my mask and looked at me and I looked at it or, and it was this moment of recognition, no threat, no food, and it swam away. And afterwards we went walking on the rocky shore and these two shells, I found these two shells and the waves are crashing. And I thought to myself, it's amazing that these shells are still intact um, because of what they went through. And then I thought to myself, it's amazing that I am too. So they have a, a memory and this whole still life was a great way to preserve memories and remember that they're spring and summer. And in this case, these are lilies that were in a vase. And the petals and the leaves reminded me of the way the sea fans flow and incredible and always unique ice patterns and bubbles. And so there's a whole series I did, uh, some more personal, well, this is a personal uh, found object, but some that were like family history and other things. The content always changes with the juxtaposition. So that's my story about shells and flowers and ice and winter. It's a beautiful series and it's, it, it's got a real painterly quality to it. Um, you know, when it, and it, it really does deserve a, 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 a zoomed in look so you can really see the texture in the ice and just the depth that's created um, in the photograph. So they're and, really beautiful. And, uh, and just to mention that um, the size, if the print um, is 13 by 19, for example, um, it, it just seems so much more otherworldly because the scale changes. And that's what's so amazing about photography and macro photography, how the scale of the object and the scale of the print really alter your response to it. Yeah. So there you go. I'm really Thank pleased you. to have them. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Russ, so much. We'll see you soon. Yep. Bye. Low bar. Uh, Lowell Barr lives here in Socrates. Uh, uh, lots of you folks will probably be familiar with Lowell's work. Um, Lowell, this is, this is part of a, a, a project you were working on uh, where you were um, scanning old slides. Is that right? Yes. Great. Yes, I, I did a lot of traveling and my family did a lot of traveling <clears throat> in the 60s and 70s. And I ended up with all the slides. And so I thought, you know, I can't just throw them out. I have to look through them and try to preserve them. And so many were beyond repair. They were just, you know, faded and dirty and scratched. So what I started doing was just sort of using them as a basis for, for playing with colors and shapes and textures and making them a little bit supernatural. And this was the Ganges River in what was called Benares at the time on the eastern coast of India. Uh, we got up at dawn to go out on a little boat. The, the GHAT, 
are steps leading down to the, we're still looking at Joan, by the way. Um, oh no, really? <laughs> oh look. No, no, no. Uh, that's okay. Well, like, Joan looks better than I do. No, uh, where's Lowell, well, you're on. I'm on, but you don't, I are see you. you. I don't see Joan, but well, I see you. Well, you know what, I'll, I'll put a minus on mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, you don't have to see my face, that's okay. Um, so we you're, went out. Of you're seeing Joan. The, the, no, the, now I'm seeing uh, you. Viewers are seeing you. Viewers but I'm not seeing me. Way. Okay. But I saw Joan and now I'm seeing you. Right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, this, there's steps going down to the Ganges and pilgrims come from all over India to bathe in the holy waters, you know, and purify their souls for the future life. And the smoke rising is the burning ghats where they take the dead bodies and cremate them. And um, so we wandered around. We're not really supposed to go to the burning ghats, but we saw it from a distance. And we kind of left when it looked like the guy's head was going to fall off. We didn't want to see that. But it was an amazing trip. And going through these old pictures is just so much fun. And seeing what I can make out of something that's basically garbage. That's do all. Have, do you have much more to go through? Many oh, God, I have, I've gone through like at least 1,500 and I probably still have uh, close to 1,000 left. I sort of, I sort of stalled and <laughs> I've been doing other things. Nice. Well, that's but I'll come back to it. Uh, well, as you know, I, I'm liking what, you're, what you've been doing recently too. So getting oh. to oil paintings. Uh, yeah, there's some really wonderful oil paintings of Lowell's um, on uh, smaller ones on that have been in a couple different shows. Yeah. So, yeah. Still making them. I'm still making them. All right, great. Good to see you, Lowell. Good to see you, Robert. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Our um, next artist is Susan Barrett. Is Susan here? I don't think so. Um, but I do have that. Susan, I am here. Oh, you are here. Oh, great. Wonderful. Uh, give me a little wave, Susan, so I can see you. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Let me, uh, let me pull you up and, um, there you are. Go for it. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Um, well, I'm a, I'm really predominantly a painter, but photography has always been an incredibly important part of my work for kind of my visual note taking and my sketchbook and where I, I'm a representational painter and it's where my ideas come. And I've, I've always collaged them and cut and pasted them, them and painted from them. But I saw the big David Hockney retrospective a few years ago. And it was just, I, I found it just an extraordinary show. But what I saw there that I hadn't seen in person were all his photo collages. And I became, somewhat obsessed with trying to figure out exactly how he did what he did. So I took a walk down a street, War Warburton in Hastings, New York. And I basically took a thousand photos in about three blocks, kind of stopping every couple of steps and, and taking um, you know, a, a photo from all kinds of vantage points. And then I had about a thousand photographs and I went home and I, I just tried all kinds of, I, I had them printed out as real shots. Trying to figure out exactly how he did what he did. Exactly, exactly. I was determined and I realized it was fascinating because I didn't realize looking at the work, he doesn't cut anything. It's all kept as rectangles. Stopping every and, and taking a couple of steps um, and, and taking you know, a photo um, from all kinds you know, of vantage points. And then I had about a thousand photographs. And then I had about a thousand photographs. And then I had about a thousand photographs. And I went home and I all I kinds of I, I had them printed all out. All kinds of shots. I, I had them printed out, out exactly how you did that. Exactly how you did that. Exactly how you did that. It was exactly. determined. Something, something went with the sound. Sorry about that. Someone was unmuted. That's okay. No problems. I believe me. I, I teach via meets all the time. I'm used to it. <laughs> but anyway, but what I was going to say is, so I ended up finding just an incredible, all the variations and modulations and things you could do. And I was doing it with the physical pictures. And I realized 
they just start physically building up and you lose the flow because you're dealing with just too much layer of paper. So I went to the computer and that's where these this series came from. So they're actually all rectangles, but I was able just to flip them, turn them. And what I didn't I, have to deal with the- I ended up finding this incredible, all the variations and modulations and things you could do. And I was doing it with the physical pictures and I realized they just start physically And in this one, I, I really wanted to bend the space. You can tell by um, kind of, I, I really, this was one of the later ones. They kind of open up. So I don't know, it's, something has been going on with the sound. So yeah, that's pretty much it that. though. That's um, it. Yeah, if, if everyone can just stay muted until it's, until it's your time to talk, okay. that would be wonderful. Much appreciated. And I didn't want to print them without making them into a true rectangle. I wanted the space of the paper kind of to move out, as you can see, with the jagged edge. It's almost, I'm always intrigued by how we perceive things. And, you know, a continuous tone image really hasn't, doesn't capture the way that I look at things. Um, so this, this was just a great exploration and I'm continuing it in all kinds of ways uh, with new subject matter. Have you ever, collage the original photographs together. Yes, uh, I, I, I have a rather large piece, but um, it, you know, it, and it, it has a kind of a strength because it's, it's uh, just so physically, it, it exists because it is all those physical layers. Um, but it, again, because I got, I just insisted on using so many photographs, it just started building up that I kind of really, I really fell into the digital form because you might not realize how many photographs are in here, but there's a lot in here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's deceptive. Yes, very much so. Well, thank you so much, Susan. I'm thank glad you. you're able to join us. Thank you very much. Okay, next um, we have two photographs from, uh, Nancy Cantandella. Nancy is an artist living in uh, Kingston, New York. This one is this one um, is the second by by Nancy as well, and I believe that that is Teddy, that was in one of Nancy's other pieces. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, two photographs by Arabella Colton. Uh, these are from a, an artsy exclusive um, exhibit that I have of Arabella's work. It's called The Wall Dogs of San Francisco, 1990s. And in San Francisco in the 1990s, there was an anonymous artist who was um, walking around San Francisco and painting uh, dogs on various uh, walls, sort of, you know, a bit like Banksy, uh, but uh, you know, he would, nobody knew who he was. There was always rumors that it was a uh, art student. Um, so I included a few of Arabella's works from the Wall Dog series um, in this show. This is called uh, 415 Post, I believe, uh, 415 Chestnut Street. And then the second uh, is called Split Wall. A split dog. Uh, if you wanted to have a look, there's 36 uh, photographs in the series, um, and that is um, on Artsy. It's the Wall Dogs of San Francisco. Uh, next, we have some work by uh, Ross Corsair. Um, I don't think Ross is here with us. Uh, this is the first photograph. Um, I'm so sorry, folks. Here we go. Uh, this is, Ross lives in Garrison, New York. Uh, this is called Severance. And then Ross's second photo in the show is called Sisters of Mercy. And they're small, they're two by three. Shelly Davis is an artist living in uh, Malden on the Hudson, which is a small little hamlet here in Saugerties. Uh, this is called Morning Sunrise. It is 11 by 14. And then Shelley's second piece is called um, Mother Goose. This is traditional uh, film photography and it's 14 by 16. 
Next, we have uh, Nancy DeFlon. Nancy, I thought- Hi, Robert. Let me find you. I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I gotta, I gotta find you though. Okay. Crazy woman. <laughs> got me? Uh, yeah, the pictures you. are more important than I am. I got you. Okay. All right, wonderful. Uh, <laughs> tell me about this one. Um, yeah, this, uh, the title Windswept actually has a double meaning. Uh, one thing, it's, it's a ruin, as you can see, and um, it's right, right now, it's on the coast. I think when it's built, when it was built, it was a 21 room mansion. Uh, I don't think it was quite that close to the coast. And so, you know, between the wind and the water, it'll probably be, what's left of it will be, I think, reclaimed by, um, by nature. But um, the other part of the, 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 the title is, is that that was the name of this mansion. It was called Windswept. It's um, on the Narragansett coast in Rhode Island, and it's right off um, a, a, a trailhead. It's a very walk of maybe two or three minutes off this trailhead, which is on, on the main road that goes up through Narragansett and uh, points north. Um, so that a lot of people come there and a lot of people take pictures of it. And so, um, you know, sometimes you have to wait for somebody to get out of the way or judge whether uh, you, you'll be able to uh, photo, Photoshop them out easily or whatever. Um, but I figure, well, a lot of these pictures probably look alike. And let me see, what can I do with this to, to do something different with it? And I tried a lot of things, um, different kinds of filters. I have all these sets of filters. And this is the one I settled on. I, I thought it was, it was the most unusual. And um, I just, I like the, I like the way it brings out the, sort of the textures of these bricks or whatever it is that you know stones actually that that it's made of and then you have contrasting textures of of the grass that's you know uh, growing vertically and all that and um uh, well you have the water coming in there that's when you want to photograph from that angle you have to it's better to wear waterproof shoes yeah and then what if uh this is this is a gorgeous piece is this uh cape cod no that's rhode island too Oh, Rhode Island. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, Th this is um, this is a scene, not this exact scene, but I mean this particular place. Right in, in this picture, I was I was standing up on a height, but say from the ground. I've been photographing this for years and years, and for hours and hours. And of course, the pictures have changed as my photographic style has uh, has changed and hopefully uh, improved. Um, so somewhere along the line, when I was going to Rhode Island photographing this place, I became acquainted with the, the painters, the 19th century, and some of them went to the 20th century, painters who had come east from, say, from New York and from the Hudson River School, and kind of followed the, the tourist industry, what you might call it, was, was just, or I should say the vacation industry was the beginning in Rhode Island and, and uh, New England uh, at, at that time, and they began painting there. And so you had people like uh, like Kensett uh, and William Trost Richards and well, Alfred Bridger is my my patron saint, quite honest. I love his work. Um, and so I've, I've been trying and trying to do a photograph that is very much in that style. And this was so far. This is, the I think, the best that I've I've come up with. I want to try to get one that's closer to the ground. Um, but um, so, so I. I had a few pictures like this. I, but then I, ch I chose this one. I have two that I like, but I chose this one. And um, I applied a filter that it kind of flattens, flattens it. It, ta you know, it takes away a lot of the detail. Um, because I wanted that timeless look because you have the, the people there and I'm glad I have the people there. Uh, they give some scale to it, but also um, you can't really see from the people what era this is. You can't see the details of their clothing or anything. In fact, when my, my son saw it, he said, oh, you could just imagine the Victorian costumes on these people. It, it's, it works really well. It's beautiful. And it's going to picture is called Timeless. And so, you yes. know. It is, it's, it is timeless. Yeah. And thank you for having both of these on the show. Thank They're both you. very dear to my heart. Absolutely. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. Good to see you. Okay, uh, next we have um, Harold uh, Finkelson. Um, Harold is an artist living in Woodstock.
We have two works by Jeffrey Friedkin. Jeff, uh, this one is called uh, Sleepy Hollow. Jeffrey lives, uh, I'm sorry, this one is called Spring Awakening. Uh, Jeffrey lives in Sleepy Hollow and it's a really lively um, scenario of um, Washington Square Park. Uh, sort of missed those days when we would see this on the streets. Um, and Jeffrey's second piece um, is a landscape called Frozen City Sunset. I have two works by uh, Marianne Glass. Um, hold on one sec, here we go. Marianne, you're not here, are you? No. Oh. Sorry, folks, I'm clicking through to the wrong things. Here we go. Okay, so this is the first Route 9 barn. And then the second um, is called uh, Winding Road. And I just want to read you, Marianne provided something for me um, to say about this. Uh, during the past year, like everyone else, I stayed close at home. Local road trips kept cabin fever at bay and became my photographic focus. I grew up in a rural community in Ohio, so I'm always particularly drawn to old barns and small houses. It's always an exciting moment to espouse such treasures, to turn the car around, park on the shoulder and compose the image. I do that too. <laughs> I'm sure many of you do that. Um, I photograph exclusively with my iPhone and I use various iPhone uh, phone apps to develop my images. Uh, so these are Marianne Glass, and Marianne has a number of also uh, other photographs as well on Artsy with, with the gallery. Uh, these are two photographs by Dan Goldman. Uh, Dan is an artist living in Red Hook, New York. This is called Deluge, Rhinebeck, New York. Uh, it's got a real, um, a real ethereal kind of creepy feel to it. Uh, the second is called Montauk, and it's just a really beautiful abstract um, of, a, of a seascape. Uh, the next image is by Gwyneth Green. Uh, Gwyneth, Gwyneth lives in Little Silver, uh, New Jersey. And Gwyneth provided me with something to say about her piece as well. Um, I know Gwyneth as a poet and as she start, st starts off, most people know me, Gwyneth Green, as a poet. Much of my work in the past 10 years has been ephrastic, inspired by others' art. Um, actually, Gwyneth has been a uh, part of a number of the um, Ecrasy shows that I've done uh, at um, Emerge Gallery where art is inspired by poetry and poetry is inspired by art. Uh, so over a year ago, an artist friend suggested that I work with my own photos. This confused me a bit as I wasn't certain if I was supposed to be taking photos with the purpose to be inspired to write. I gathered together a huge bank of photos that I had taken over years. Slowly, I began working with them. In the beginning, I used the photos in their raw form. With time, I studied and learned techniques that would enhance and create various moods. These moods and emotions became the underlying themes in each of my photo musings. I strip down each photo and create layers. While doing so, I usually find my poetic flow that fits the photo. Rather than trying to place a whole poem, I found that haikus, six word stories and small poetic flows embedded into the photo worked best. My goal is to create an image where the words are hidden, are quietly hidden, that the photo draws the viewer in and on close inspection, the poetic flow reveals itself. The photo musing beyond boundaries, which is this, this title here, was originally bursting with color. I stripped it down and rebuilt it with seven layers. The seed pods needed to be the focus for they are reaching beyond the boundaries. Uh, so this is Gwyneth Green, and I was really pleased to see Gwyneth's work um, at the, uh, at, in, in this show, because I, as I said, I, I know Gwyneth as a poet, and a poet who is inspired by art and writes um, um, in, in, uh, poems uh, that, that are inspired by particular pieces of art. Okay, um, so we're going to move to the next, and our next is... Tom Hackett. Uh, Tom, yep. are you here? Let me. Yes. Use... Okay, great. There I am. Oh, yes. <laughs> Find you. Welcome back, Tom. How are you? Uh, thanks. I'm well. I'm well. Um, you might think of this photograph as sort of depicting 
something of my mood these days. Uh, I think of it as a metaphor, sort of like uh, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, these days, this could be the 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 light and the air at the end of the pandemic. It's a composite of two photographs, uh, one taken in my backyard and the other one taken uh, in the street out in front where there was a, a trailer full of natural gas pipes uh, parked waiting to be installed into the road. It's a very cool photograph. I really like in the in the center here the circular motions of the buildings behind it. Uh, yeah, it's re really nicely composed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was done with a fisheye lens. Yeah, um, and the the pipe was done with a, a normal lens, but it has its own uh, circular characteristic to it. The pipe that is great. Thanks, Tom. Uh, there's a number of Tom's photographs as well, additional photos of Tom's on, um, on Artsy. So if you'd like, have a look. Um, and our next artist is uh, Christine Henninger. Uh, Christine, I see you right here. I think that's you. Yes, hi, Robert. Welcome. How are you? Thank you. I'm great. Thanks for including my photo. Absolutely. I love it. Great. Oh, on the outside, well, looking in. Yes. Well, I like to photograph interiors and objects. And um, sometimes if you just catch something at a different angle, it brings out, uh, it's transformative. It brings out something that you didn't see before. And I've spent, we've spent a lot of time indoors. So I've done a lot of that this year, but I decided to take a walk outside and peek in to see how, it, how things looked when I was looking in the window rather than being in here. And I clicked uh, several photos. And what I liked about them was that they, they got the, the reflection of the outside also on the inside. So it made it much more, in, I thought it was an interesting photo for that reason and kind of like blurring the lines of inside and outside a little bit. Um, the greens, I, I really like the greens and the oranges. I mean, they yes, they're really nicely. Did you enhance that at all, or or was that sort of? Yes, yes, yeah. it's an enhanced photo, and the green actually uh, was from some of the plants out of the window, and the orange, of course, that's that's my chair. I do, I am fond of orange. I have a lot of orange and a lot of orange in my photos, golds and oranges. Nice, so, yeah, a wonderful color. Thank you. An orange show over the over the summer. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Jane. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. You too. All right. Next, we have uh, a couple photographs by uh, Tara Holmes. Uh, this is called Family Picnic. Tara, I don't think you're here, are you? I didn't think so. This one is called After Dinner. And then the third is called Proposal. Um, and uh, I will tell you a little bit about Tara's work. Uh, the body of work at a distance, which is the series that these three photographs are from, considers the realm of eras past with the comparison of the present day. During the time frame of isolation last year, a realization of a loss of imagery was occurring. Even if we were seeing one another, there was an unwritten social stigma of not documenting the time spent together. I was led to question the way in which eras before would have navigated the current day restrictions by joining together, wanting to impede on the documented moments of embrace and push them into our realm of a mixed digital space. Each image is first digitally stretched beyond the bounds of its physical borders as that one was. Then the figures are plucked out of their state of existence, pushed, put, pushed into a glitched space, reconfiguring the people from a state of embrace into a state of overthought distance. 
and that's Tara Holmes. Uh, Tara lives in Slingerland, New York. Uh, next, we have a photograph by Deborah Joyce. Uh, Deborah lives here in Saugerties. This is called Ice Layers, uh, and it's a digital photograph, um, sort of very abstract of a, of a um, ice crack. We have two works by Shoshana Cortez, who lives in New Jersey. This is called Waiting. And then the second is called A Day in the City. These are the kind of this, me personally, these are the kind of photographs that I'm drawn to, reflections and mannequins. And, um, you know, I, I really responded to this one in particular. Uh, Sakina uh, Khadi Khadija is um, an artist here, originally from Saugerties, who now lives in Kingston. Carrie Colnett. Carrie, are you here? Yes. Uh, can you do a little wave for me? No, I don't see you. Sorry, can you wave for me, Carrie? I don't see you. Oh, there you are. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome back. Thank you. So yeah, tell us tell us about this piece. Um, so uh, so I'm a New Jersey based artist, and I live in Jersey City. Uh, my work is mostly photographic and examines different elements of everyday life. So this work is titled Rear View. Um, the car is a constant source of discovery whether it is a glimpse into someone else's life or the revelation of a mirrored landscape sinking into the paved horizon. In the car, we are observers getting lost in the sight of the world passing us by, while simultaneously stuck inside our vehicles, unable to escape the drift of our own currents. Um, in was this the state that I felt the need to document the paradox of traveling while sitting still, so I held up my camera to a rear view mirror and tried to capture the instant of moving forward while looking back. This work is made with a digital camera uh, with very minimal editing, only done for color correction. So it, it's all taken in the camera with both the reflection of the rear view mirror and a little glimpse into what is in front of um, the rear view mirror through the, the windshield. Uh, and it's a color inkjet print. It's a very cool, it's very deceptive when you, you know, you, it really deserves a little, a little time spent with it. Um, and the, the movement's really wonderful on this. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Dorothea. I saw you here, Dorothea. Let's find you. Uh, Dorothea Marcus from Woodstock, New York. Uh, welcome back, Dorothea. There you are. Uh, so tell us about these two pieces. Okay, thank you, Robert. And by the way, you did a great job curating the show. It's one of the most interesting photography shows I've seen in a while. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Really, really exciting. Much. I try to get a little bit of everything, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Good. Well, it's interesting. Like a lot of people, the pandemic was a challenge for me because most of my photography was stimulated by travel. And, um, and so, of course, I was taking walks. The only way I could see friends was to go for walks outside with them, even in the winter. And I just tried to use my aesthetic, which is more abstract, um, you know, in terms of shapes and colors. Um, and um, and I've become really interested in night photography. And this is, I called it Lure Bleu, which is, you know, twilight. Um, it's sort of this magical blue hour where things can become very mysterious and magical. And this is actually, taken in Uptown Kingston. That's like on uh, Crown and North Front Street. Um, and it reminded me of some photographs I'd taken in Cuba with the shape of the roof and the wire coming across. So I really like the composition. Um, and, uh, and everything I shoot is on iPhone. And I do very little, I sometimes just crop things. I don't usually do, use any filters or other editing. I really like the uh, yellow in the window. Yeah. My eye goes right there. So it's a yeah. really beautiful piece. Uh, and speaking about travel photography, the second piece is uh, Tokyo. That was, yeah, that, 
that's the last trip that I took before um, before the pandemic. And um, and what was interesting was Tokyo itself was a challenge for me because, you know, the city was pretty much destroyed in World War II by bombing. And so most of the buildings are kind of modern gray buildings. You know, there wasn't, you know, I'd started off photographing in Morocco and Cuba, Morocco and Cuba, where I had, you know, these gorgeous colors, uh, vibrant colors. And what I like about this photo was um, it has that vibrancy and color, even though it was in gray Tokyo. And um, I noticed a lot of my photographs that I took in Tokyo were this kind of aspect of looking down an alley or a street. And often it would be someone's back walking away. Um, there's another one where, which is like on a gray rainy day that I like a lot. Um, but then when I went to Kyoto, I found there was, you know, a little more variety um, and color that I could photograph. But um, this was my last day in Tokyo. So it was my farewell to Tokyo and travel. And yeah, I was just going to say, and to, to traveling. Yes. Well, hopefully the future will hold some more travel um, and some really wonderful photographs. Uh, I wanted to just mention that Dorothea um, really incorporates her photographs in her artwork in a number of different yes. ways. She's a really wonderful collage artist. Um, and her, her photographs from Japan in particular have showed up in a number of her collage. So I'm really glad to see some of these photographs here. Thank I you. Thank Thanks, you. Dorothea. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Ellen Martin. I know Ellen from uh, New Jersey. Ellen and I have been working together for a number of years now. Um, and two of the photographs in this show are from Ellen's Abandoned series. Gotcha, Ellen. You're on, you're on mute though. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good, great to see you. Hey. Um, okay, so you might think that this series has something to do with the pandemic, but actually it has nothing to do with the pandemic. It started after a very emotional incident with my mother who had Alzheimer's or dementia at the time. And even though I was over the, the um, incident three weeks later, I was very surprised to learn that I continued to shoot this series uh, for years actually, although um, 200 of images were shot within the first two years, but I'm still shooting abandoned buildings or gas stations or just objects I see on the street that, that could have been fixed or easily repaired. Uh, this part of Long Branch, which is the South Broadway part of Long Branch, was once a very vibrant um, throughway to the beach. The beach is, the Atlantic Ocean is literally two blocks away from this street. And everything has since been raised to the ground. So none of these buildings exist any longer. What I found especially interesting about this one was the layers of lettering on the outside of the building. The modern method refers to cleaners and laundering. And of course the, the street itself is, is a mess. Um, but Sipperstein's is a hardware store which exists in another form right up the street actually. Um, but one of the owners of Sipperstein's actually had an interest in this area which is now kind of totally forgotten by Long Branch, sadly, and may never be redeveloped. So this is modern method. You wanna to go to the next one, Robert? I'm trying, I'm trying to bring up the next one. Here we go. So this is just up the street from that building. Um, this one's called Vines um, and I decided to leave this one in color, all of these were done with an iPod touch. And this one has actually done quite well for me in other shows as well. And they all have the X on it. It was especially poignant to me because it has the living vines that are really, you know, threatening to strangle the building. Um, but I just love the structure of the building. So many of these facades really had some charm to them. And yet the entire row of streets of the uh, of South Broadway were totally demolished. Now, so, so. I, 
I've been seeing that you're you're um, photographing a lot now over in uh, Sandy Hook, is it? Yes. Um, have you been adding to the series? Because the, the photographs are really beautiful. Yes, thank you. I have been adding. I have to fully document them and give them names and dates and all of that. But yes, I am adding to the series. Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining us, Ellen. Thank you. Uh, and there are uh, there are a number of pieces of Artie's on uh, or of Artie's of Ellen's on Artie as well. Uh, so please have a look. Thank you, Robert. You got it. Uh, it's Ellen Martin, Red Bank, New Jersey. Uh, the next few photographs are by uh, Carrie Marvelli. Uh, this is called Truth. Carrie lives in um, Kingston, Kingston, New York. Um, and this is what Carrie says about truth. This piece incorporates several original photos repurposed to create a digital collage work, which explores the question of truth within the justice system. The door was shot in Beacon. The statue was shot at a, a Black Lives Matter rally in Kingston. And the fence was shot on Progress Street in Kingston. Uh, so this is truth. And then Carrie's second piece is called um, Indoor Life. And this is a digital photograph. Susan, Susan Michael John, I saw you here and let's find you. I see you, all right. Come on up, welcome. Oh, you're, you're on mute, Susan. I know, I just unmuted. Okay. There you go. Um, I wanna thank you, Robert. And I think it's very fitting that I'm showing a bit in Emerge Gallery because I'm just emerging and I went to art school in 1972 and put that all aside and had a long academic career in something completely unrelated. Um, and I've come back to my art. Um, I have been painting and every couple of years I do a painting and sometimes I'd sell them. And if people can see me, I've actually put a painting next to me um, so you can get a sense of my figurative work. I work a lot from vintage photographs which I could have done for this show, but I didn't. And basically in my painting, I make up my colors. I work from black and white photos and I use a lot of jewel colors. Uh, I like compliments, you know, purple and yellow and red and green. And um, if I was gonna describe myself, I'd say I'm a colorist. I'm much more, I'm painting now, I'm slow, but I'm painting. And this, this photograph really kind of emerged um, very serendipitously. Um, I take photos all the time. I use my camera. Uh, this is very different from my other work in a lot of ways. Um, it's unenhanced, it's enlarged. And when it's enlarged, it's 11 by 14. You could really see that it's snowing. And the only hint of color, this is a color photograph. And the only hint of color, if as you can see is the horizontal tree has slight tinge of red and brown. And the tree that looks like it's, I feel like it's kind of standing on its toes on top of it actually has a greenish tint. Um, this is really um, an unusual image for me and it's very abstract for me. And it's also really inspired me. Um, I really thought that this is very different than my other work. I like to think it's sort of figurative because it has the graves in the background and I feel like there's figures lying quietly under there. But I really want to extend the notion of my figurative work and look at other shapes and compositions and really try to seek something more subtle and subdued than the work I do, which again, I don't know how many people can see this, but um, my work tends to be very bright and. Um, Colorful. Thank you, Susan. All right. Uh, hold on, I'm so sorry. Technical difficulties. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Susan. So this is this oh. is the Woodstock Cemetery. In February. <laughs> In February, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, you so it. much. Yeah. Uh, our next artist is Stuart Mono. This is called uh, Volleyball in um, Fire Island. Stuart, are you here? 
Yeah, I'm here. Can you yes, hear me, sir. Robert? Uh, thanks for including me in the in the exhibit. This is terrific. Oh, you got it. A, um, I especially like this piece here. The um, it's I, I, again another piece. When I first looked at it, I had to look real close to see if it was a photograph. Um, and really, the only true indications of it are the the water in the left hand side. But it's 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 really beautiful. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh... I guess I've really embraced technology and part of the technology is uh, using a drone, um, which really gives you unique perspectives on everything. Um, and this is something, you know, a volleyball net set up on the beach, whereas when you're on the ground, you look at it, it doesn't look like anything unique or even of, you know, particular interest. And then when you get above it a couple of hundred feet and you look down, it takes on a whole different look. Um, and even the color of the sand and the water and everything else, it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a great tool. And I guess I'm a, I'm a real believer in, uh, you know, using all the new technology that we have available to us to, to create images. Yeah. And this one was uh, of a more traditional nature. And many years ago, I, I did a workshop with Ansel Adams. And that's, so I guess this is sort of more in that kind of vein of trying to attain a full spectrum or full tonal image from your deepest blacks to your whitest whites. And this was just simply a tree shot in North, Northern California, about an hour North of uh, San Francisco. Um, but I like to think that it's sort of in that vein of the California photographers from back then. Beautiful, thank you, Stuart. Thanks. You're, you're in Socrates, is that correct? You live yes. In okay. Yep. All right. Uh, the next pieces uh, we have are by Meredith Morabito. Um, Meredith has two pieces in the show. Um, and what she does is she sets up little scenarios outside in her yard. Uh, Meredith has a farm. And she um, engages chipmunks into um, interacting within the different sets um, and snap some pictures of them. Um, it's a really fun, fun series. Uh, this is Meredith Morbito. She, um, you can follow her on Instagram to see more of the series. Um, I know Meredith mostly as a uh, sculptor and she does some really beautiful um, figurative sculptures that I've had exhibited um, at the gallery a number of times in the window. Uh, so that's Meredith Morbito. Let's bring up the next. Uh, oh, I need to share it. Hold on, folks. Here we go. Okay. Next, we have uh, two photographs by Susan Phillips. This is called Beauty from Behind. Uh, Susan is an artist in um, Mount Tremper. And the second is Housted Street Reflection. This is a digital photograph. Sorry, folks, I think I went, slipped a little out of order. Um, okay, we've got Ernie Martusens. Uh, Ernie, I saw you here. Ernie lives here in Saugerties. All right, great. Uh, Ernie, you're on mute. Excellent. No, you're still on mute. Let me see if I can unmute you from here. There you go. You're good. Welcome okay. back. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for being included in the show. Uh, this is uh, this is a photograph of the uh, the uh, Fisher Art Center in Bard, and it was we were going there for a concert one night, and this thing just popped out. The sun was going down about seven thirty or so and uh, caught the reflections of the sun. And it's an iron, it's a clad building. I'm not exactly sure what, probably a you know, polished stainless steel of some sort. And it's by Frank Gehry. So it's a really beautiful building. And uh, it just stands out. There's so much color in, in basic stuff. And I tend to do that. I tend to look at uh, look for color in that. Uh, in different places. I did a study of a Con Edison plant in New York City that you would think would be uh, very drab and very dark, but as it turns out, it was incredibly colorful. 
because they assign color values to every pipe and every tank and every function. And uh, it was just magic. And uh, so that was, uh, that was one of my studies. Uh, so I do tend to work in, uh, with uh, Photoshop some because I think it does bring out details that uh, can be enhanced. The, the luminosity in certain pictures can really be brought out. So um, I do that. I've done different uh, studies of odd things like coal hole covers in Brooklyn. I've done uh, studies of Mexican ceremonial masks and bridges and structures. And uh, I tend to, to go in that direction. So that's how I do. Thanks, Ernie. <laughs> The shine on this is really beautiful. I, I know the building well, but I really haven't seen it in this way before. It's really nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Amy Neufeld. Uh, Amy, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Oh, I see you. <laughs> oh, I lost you. There you go. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. Virtually meet you. Uh, so we have two pieces of Amy's in the show. Uh, this one is called Fairy Lights 3, and then the second is called uh, Never Still. Um, so yeah, um, let, let us know about the work. Um, so I am an artist based in Jersey City, and uh, I do a lot of work that is focused around trees. I just love how expressive they are, and I feel like each one is sort of like a fingerprint. Everyone is different and sort of evokes a different feeling. Um, and so my work, this is from, these two are from the Ether Ethereal Forest series. And um, basically it's kind of, I feel like when you, my cat, sorry, <laughs> wants to be in the scene. Um, you know how you, sometimes you go out in nature and it feels very, um, uh, it feels very magical and beautiful. And, and then you take a picture and you go home and you look at the picture and it's very flat and you don't, you don't feel that sense that you felt when you were actually there. So I try to bring that magic back into the scenes that I do. So this one is Fairy Lights 3 and uh, it's a series. There's uh, obviously two other ones. <laughs> and um, this one is sort of a happy, magical, uh, type forest scene. The other one is a little bit different um, and it's not really like any others that I've done, but I happened to be in a car in autumn and I wasn't driving, which I usually am. So I was able to, I was playing around with slow shutter speeds at the time. And so I took this shot and I kind of like it, be especially because, well, I like the abstract quality of it, but I also like the feeling of motion, whereas these are trees that you don't typically think of as really moving. They're very solid and still, although when you think about it, they do kind of move with the wind and the seasons and stuff. So um, I, I like the sort of um, uh, feeling that you get from this. Yeah, this, it, it definitely um, puts me in a, in a certain place uh, looking at this photo. I mean, I feel like I'm just riding right along with it and the breeze on me. Thank really you. Nice. Yeah, yeah. The, the originals are a little bit more saturated. They're a little washed out here, but I usually um, print on metallic paper, which also mm -hmm. gives it a little bit more dimension. So people are, sometimes they'll look at the original and they can't quite figure out why it looks so dimensional and then I tell them it's on metallic paper and they, they you know, they get it. It's... Yeah, this, this would fit really well on metallic. Yeah. Really nice. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Uh, next we have uh, Janet Neuerzer. Neuerzer? Hauser, yes. Was I right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, let's see if I can find you, Janet. Well, wait for me, please, I'm sorry. Right there. All right, you're probably right up top. Oh, I see you. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Uh, welcome. Thank you, and thank you. Uh, so Jana has two pieces. Uh, this one is called Town Above, um, Kalanchi Below, and then this one is called uh, The White Door. Okay, well, I was given a fellowship in uh, 2019 to photograph the uh, an, an Etruscan hilltop town uh, with the pinhole camera. 
they wanted to see if I could get memory and document at the same time. And I think I succeeded. All of these are fictional imaginary, I, they're from a portfolio called Imaginary Places that I made while I was there. Uh, and they're made on color negative film with a pinhole camera. And I'm not sure that anybody knows what that means, but it means long, longish exposures, no focus, no lens, no viewfinder. And so, I, and I was in a, an Etruscan hilltop town. Uh, I went there for, uh, in November and December and there was no um, way to develop film. And so I had to wait and, until it was all over and see if what I thought was gonna work was working and it did. I was very happy. So um, I, uh, I was enamored by the white door, uh, really. The white door, there were only two in the town. I found this one the first day I was there. I found the other one a couple weeks later. And for me, they were portals. Uh, they, they never opened and they were just solid white doors. Uh, and so this one, uh, the garden on the right is the poet's garden uh, in the town. And on the left uh, is what I call the lone cypress. It's uh, a tree that just stands off by itself on a cliff. Uh, the whole town is an Etruscan hilltop town. So it, it drops off all the way around it. And the Kalanchi is a uh, kind of, it, it's loosely translated as the Badlands. It's uh, an area uh, below the town that's really um, uh, very steep and very dangerous to go down into. And it was also uh, wild boar hunting season. And so I couldn't go down. Uh, they, and I wanted to go down and walk through that area and they wouldn't let me. Um, so anyway, um, the, I, I felt like the white door was a portal. Uh, and um, I, when I found it, I wanted to photograph it in, in such a way that it really meant something to me. And so this is from four negatives that I did the last few days that I was in Chivita. And, um, and I, made, uh, I made this image from four negatives and I was pretty happy with it. I scanned the negatives and I print them out on my, in my studio on my Epson 5000. Um, the second one with the sky and uh, the, the Kalanchi below uh, the sky and the town above, I call it. Um, I, I felt like the sky was really important. I was in Chivita in November and December and it rained most of the time I was there. Uh, like Seattle, where I'm from, it rains all the time here too. Uh, uh, I, but it's, I still wanted to include the town. Uh, I wanted to include the sky. And so um, I shot the Kalanchi a lot and, um, and the buildings and the streets, the streets were cobblestone. Uh, this image allowed was, was one image that just kind of came together. It's from also from four negatives uh, that were put together in Photoshop uh, after I'd scanned the negatives. Um, and um, keeping the street and the building is a part of the image uh, for me were really, really important along with the sky. Um, and all the rest, if anyone's interested, they can go to my website, JanetNewhauser.com and see uh, the rest of the portfolio. There are about 30 altogether that I got when I was there. They're gorgeous. They're re there's a real magic to them. Um, yeah, they're, they're really beautiful. Thank you. I, I hope that they really you know, create a kind of magical sense because it is a very yeah. magical place. Yeah, they certainly do, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Janet. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Will Nixon. Uh, Will is an artist, poet artist in um, Kingston. And this is the lace mill in Kingston, I take it, no, Will? Yes, yes it is. Great. And then this one, St. Gregory's, I think, is this on 212? Yep. yep. All right. Hey, I'm getting better. All right. Welcome, Will. <laughs> well, I uh, never considered myself a photographer. Uh, I'm still, I mean, in a way I don't, I, I wouldn't know what to do with a camera, but I have the phone and I have the iPhone and I, uh, at some point, I'm trying to remember, I discovered that, um, you know, I'm 64 years old. I've been driving since I was 16. Somehow I looked on my car hood and saw the reflection and how the car hood makes a funhouse mirror 
uh, reflection. And so it just became a pursuit for me to drive around and try and you know, shoot reflections off the car. And so I'm not doing anything. I'm doing adjusting the color and those kinds of things, but the images are what they are and the car does all this. And uh, yeah, the lace mill, I had a funny story with this one. I was in the middle of shooting this and a guy comes rushing out of the lace mill, basically saying, who are you and why are you here? And he had seen me somewhere else earlier in the week shooting a different building. So <laughs> I had to explain, well, I'm just driving around shooting pictures of your buildings in my car. <laughs> uh, so yes, this is the lace mill in Kingston. This one's classic. This is gorgeous. Yeah, I like this one too. And this is this is part of the series as well with the reflection. This is a reflection on the car hood. Yeah, and that's the distortion. This would be the roof of the car, and then you see the weird oh, distortion yeah. the roof makes. Yeah, really wonderful. Thanks. Thank you, Will. And uh, you. there's a number of uh, Will's work as well on um, on Artsy from previous shows. Always a pleasure, Will. We got to get you back here to read some poetry. I'm looking forward I'm, to it. Uh, so am I. I'm hoping that's soon. All right. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Uh, next, I have work by uh, Christy O'Connor. Uh, Christy is an artist in um, um, New Jersey. Uh, these are photograms. Uh, this is called About Last Night. And then the second is called To Bear Witness. Uh, Christy provided me with a little something to read about them. The pieces were produced during my residency at Alter Work Studio located in Long Island City in February of 2020. These prints were created using an alternative darkroom process known as photograms. Photograms are processed by laying objects on photographic paper and exposing it to light during a set amount of time and then chemically processing the paper as one normally would. These objects used to produce these photograms include wool, lace, thread, and cheesecloth. Uh, Chrissy has um, a, uh, she has a, um, speaks a lot to feminism in, in her work. Um, and uh, these two certainly do. Uh, Julie O'Connor. Julie, I don't think you're here, are you? Yes, I'm here. You are? Okay. Let's see. Thank you. That's it. Right up top. Okay, great. Welcome. Thank you, Robert. I'm very happy to be included. In uh, my pleasure. It's a beautiful piece. Sea in the Sky is a photograph that um, I intended to convey a sense of calm and a feeling of endless openness in all directions in your surroundings. Uh, the feeling of serenity uh, that you get only when you're out in nature and sense of peace. It, was a, it has the whole world in it, our environment, the land, the sea, the sky, and each of these basic elements with their many shapes and changeability before your eyes. It can be a focal point for contemplation or meditation. I had a vision for seeing the sky that it jumped in the water to take, but um, the act of capturing the photograph was more difficult than I thought. Um, I had to have an aerial perspective. And I, so I stood in the water, holding my camera high overhead with my arms straight up while the clouds were flying by overhead. Um, despite the peaceful mood of the image, taking it was completely frenetic. Uh, I'm tall and I have a long wingspan, um, but um, maintaining the challenge of getting the correct stance for the point of view that I wanted while constantly shifting and moving back and forth with my viewfinder was a challenge. And, but after a long time of dedicated focus, focus, I got the right alignment of the water, the trees, reflections, the clouds and the leaves. Um, my, um, my years of studying East meets West culture and working and traveling in Asia are interwoven into the background of this piece. Uh, for example, the compression of space that results in an imperceptible horizon. Um, 
the mix of flat planes and intricate patterns and vivid colors are reminiscent of timeless Japanese artistic innovations. And um, some of these traits are expressed in multiple Eastern art forms from textiles to wood block prints and uh, sometimes called the floating world in Japan. Multiple layers here are combined to render a joyous sensibility with an asymmetrical flat feel. And additionally, this is color palette that Monet used when he was under the influence of Japanesma. This is one of my most popular photographs and it's been exhibited over a dozen times and just won a couple of first place awards in the category of abstraction. And this piece solidified my decision to continue to develop the Sea into Sky series, which I'm currently still working on you know, this mix of real landscape elements and sky and reflections and the quality of water. It's wonderful. And I could definitely see that uh, the whole Japanese element and influence in it. Uh, yeah, continue on with the series. Really, really beautiful. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Julie. I appreciate it. Okay, uh, next we have work by uh, two pieces by Michael Palladino. Uh, Michael lives in Bangor, Pennsylvania, uh, and also um, I think believes, I believe he lives in the city as well. Uh, this one is called Yellow Throated uh, Vireo. And then the second is called uh, Starling um, um, Woodpile. And these are photographs with um, encaustic. Steve Gentile. Steve, I had seen you here earlier. I hope you're still here. Are you here? We're running a little behind. I am, yes. You I are. Am. Great. Uh, yeah, Steve's got two pieces in the show. Uh, this is the Ashokan uh, Reservoir. And then the second is Cooper Lake. So yeah, let us, uh, tell us about these works, Steve. Sure, if we back up to the uh, Ashokan yep. one, uh, that one, uh, as people have mentioned, you know, we're, we're, as photographers, we're dangerous when we're behind the wheel and it's a, a gorgeous day out or a, a moody day photographically because we could be, I know for myself, I could be quite a, a real train wreck waiting to happen on the roads <laughs> because I pull over suddenly, I turn around dramatically and quickly and jump out of the car, race across the street. Uh, this was one example here. I was coming up from Kingston uh, via New York City. So it was New York City after a long trip, then through Kingston up 28. And the sky had been doing this magic the entire trip up uh, from New York. And I just, uh, you know, I'm half watching the road, half looking out. Uh, the left side, which is the West, um, and saying, oh my God, this is just absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Um, I can't get home yet. I have to stop and do a detour. And I, I said, where can I go that I can get a shot? I knew that something, some magic was going to happen over the Ashokan. Um, and I went up Ohio, uh, Ohio Mountain Road um, and saw a road that pulled off of that. And I just without thinking, turned down the road, went down the road. It was a private road, pulled into somebody's driveway, jumped out of the car, jumped into their backyard and stood within their backyard and took this photograph, did it panoramically. So what we're looking at is in the very center of the photograph is the sculpture that they have and that's due south. Um, and what the photograph captures is a 90 degree angle from south east on the left side of the frame to do southwest on the right hand side. So it's a 90 degree angle that I couldn't capture any other way other than shooting it panoramically um, and moving the camera in that regard um, and catching that southeast to southwest um, sweep. You get the, uh, the, the god beams coming through the clouds, they're the reflection within. Um, all of this, while I'm, I'm trying to get this photograph, the owner of the house, of course, comes out and, and starts yelling at me, who am I? I'm calling the police, get off my property. Um, <laughs> and I said, I'll give you a print of this. I said, I can't take the time to argue because the magic is gonna be gone in five minutes. And sure enough, the magic was gone in five minutes. I said, there, now that it's done, I can reasonably talk to you. <laughs> and say, I am so sorry. I said, I'm a photographer. Here's my card. If you want to press charges, go right ahead. I said, I just can't help myself. And uh, she laughed and said, just send me a print. So I started right. 
of this. So uh, it's just, uh, you know, the, the, the way our lives go sometimes. Um, for me, um, I, I should preface this by saying I'm, I'm a working artist uh, here in Saugerties. So I make my living by selling my photographs um, and to sell them, you need to make them. So when these magic moments come, um, I have to uh, explore that and get that. Um, so for, for uh, these, um, now it's Cooper Lake here. Uh, which is another extreme, and that's a different kind of landscape. Uh, these these landscapes came after a uh, a voyage for me, um, destination still to be determined. Uh, after I lost my fiance uh, unexpectedly, um, I went from shooting traditional landscapes to uh, abstraction um, in a really strong way because my uh, world was kind of my axis. My world was kind of uh, whacked pretty hard. Um, so these mark a return to uh, what I had done traditionally before that experience, um, but with the renewed um, energy of that voyage into that grief, uh, malaise, confusion, anger, um, disappointment, et cetera, of that journey for me. Um, this is Cooper Lake. I'm trying to get this out without getting choked up about that. Um, this is Cooper Lake. The landscape that we're seeing is on the very bottom is uh, spring thaw has just started to occur at uh, Cooper Lake. These were, I think, both at about the same time in January, early February. Um, so we're seeing a little bit of water down at the bottom, but mostly it's ice across the lake. Um, and that forms the, uh, the landscape. If you turn it invert this 180 degrees, it would be as if it were a snow covered mountain and the blue of the water would be the blue of the sky. So I think that I'm still, making the journey into uh, the landscape again with the, um, the voyage into the abstraction um, of the last uh, three and a half years of photographing in that regard since her passing. So that represents these, uh, my contribution. I, I felt that that was important for me. Uh, you know my work, Robert, and uh, have been in several of your shows and have followed it from the traditional landscape through the confusion of, of that experience for me. Yeah. And, now back to here. So uh, this is an odd welcome home. <laughs> well, it's, you know, I mean, uh, uh, art can really help us heal and, um, you know, it, it, it can really do wonders. And I'm, I'm uh, glad to see that you're sort of, you know, using that energy to create um, and trying to, you know, put put a more positive spin on it. Um, they're, they're really beautiful. Um, Thank you for including me. It yeah, really absolutely. And Steve has a really gorgeous piece in the current blue show right now. Um, really, I mean, the whole package is, is just stunning from, from the, the print to, you know, the photograph to the print to, um, you know, the, the frame that Steve had put together. It's just really beautiful. Thank you, Steve. Our next piece is by Gina Petreca. Uh, Gina is an artist in uh, Springfield, New Jersey, I believe. Um, I know it's that area, possibly Maplewood. And I do have a few of Gina's uh, works in shows as well. Okay. Uh, let's bring up, oh, hold on one sec. Sorry, folks, I got to bring up the next. Uh, my next slide. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Janet Pumphrey. Uh, is Janet here? No? Okay. No, uh, I am here. I am here, are. Robert. Oh, great. Wonderful. Oh, <laughs> Thank I see. You. Perfect. Thank you so much for including me. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, the photograph is behind me. Um, I'm a I'm a photographer. I live and work in Lenox, Massachusetts. I opened up my own gallery in June, closed it in October, but I've reopened it now. And before that, I showed and get a gallery in Hudson, New York. Um, both of these pieces are um, composites, multiple exposures uh, in, in, um, uh, in Photoshop. This one is um, actually a swamp in Florida. In this real picture, way in the left-hand corner in the bottom was an alligator eating a red snake. And so I cut out the alligator and then the birds I took with my cell phone um, of a tapestry in a lawyer's office in Boston. And it was an Asian tapestry. So I added the, the birds to the, to the swamp, kind of changed the colors and the blend tones. And um, so I made an abstract, um, abstract out of it. Um, I do also do in camera multiple exposures, but I really, I prefer Photoshop. The next one is, 
This is Provincetown, and um, it's it's basically the Provincetown in the beach. I did a whole series of these, and it's um, it's it's one 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 of the series on top of another of the series, and so it makes it uh, it is a multiple exposure, but it makes it very soft. And then I played with the colors, and I played with the blend modes. I especially like this one because of the footprints. It's got a it's got a great abstract quality to it. Um, I I had really responded to this one as well. Thank you, thank you. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you for including me. It's yeah. It I mean again, it's it, it deserves a, a closer look, uh, especially this one. Um, Thanks. Thank you, Janet. Okay, next is a piece by uh, Marilyn Rowley. Uh, Marilyn lives um, here in Socrates. And I believe she gave me something. Yes. Yeah, uh, so this is um, inspired by the saving of baby squirrels that lost their mother and the absolutely profound love and attachment they each had for one another to preserve their safety. Marilyn, I don't know Marilyn as a photographer, actually. I know her more as a collage artist, pastel artist, um, some mixed media. Uh, her work is really wonderful. So I was very surprised and pleased to see this come in. Um, if um, it, it, Marilyn um, does a lot with, uh, works a lot with birds um, and uh, incorpor incorporates them into, um, into her collage. So please have a look on, on the uh, gallery site for more of Marilyn's work as well. Uh, I have two pieces by Susan Sabino. Uh, this is called Lily and the second is called Calla Lily Two. Um, Susan, um, this is called the Luminous Flower Series. It's done with only candlelight to illuminate the flower. In this way, she has a unique control of light, but at the same time, a little bit of unpredictability. She likes the excitement of the dramatic portrait effect and the wow that she feels when she captures an image created by what she thinks of as multiple little light brushes. Uh, the really classic, stunning black and white photographs. So that's Susan Sabino. Uh, we have a couple pieces by Martina Sestakova. Uh, Martina lives in Maryland. These are two pieces called from the series, Rust is an Artist. Uh, this one's called Cracking Open. Uh, they're a collection of photos that explore the beauty of anything rusty. Rust, it turns out, is amazingly creative. These close-ups of rusty surfaces are indeed just like impressive works of contemporary art. Martina explores colors, textures, and composition in her photos taken during a sailing, sailing trip uh, to Tangier Island in uh, Virginia. So that is Martina. I'm really pleased to have Martina's work here. I know her as mostly a watercolor artist. A lot of, actually a lot of artists have been surprising me with the photography show, uh, with some of the artists that I've seen um, that have included in the show. Um, Peter Tildner. Uh, I don't think Peter's here. Uh, Peter lives in Tenafly, New Jersey. Uh, and Peter says a photograph reveals as much about the photographer it does, as it does the photograph. While walking locally or in far off places, my camera is with me to record images that attract my attention. I see the world around me as picture possibilities. Subject matter, light, color, and composition are constantly being played out in my mind. Collections of these images are the source material from my merged image uh, pictures. Uh, this one is called Feyenstock Chimney. We have a black and white um, digitally enhanced photograph by Rob Wade. Uh, Rob lives um, over here in Mount Tremper and this is called White Lily. We have two pieces by J.D. Weiss. This is called The Seer. And the second is called Holding Hands at the Top of the Mountain, at the Top of the World. Uh, JD uses traditional two and a quarter um, film photography and she scans the images into the computer and then modifies them slightly. She doesn't really, um, what she'll do is she may take a number of different images of the same 
location, but compose them post-production in, in, um, in, in a computer program to replicate what she sees in her mind. So again, as a number, a, a couple artists have already uh, discussed, um, some of the, you know, the clouds may have been taken at a, taken at a different time than the actual mountains and they're, they're recomposed together um, in her photographs. Um, I've, I've been showing JD's work since I, I've been here uh, for celebrating five years uh, next month, by the way. Um, anyway, so uh, this is a show that I had done of JD's called Within the Silent Moments. The work is still up. Uh, her, all of her work is wonderful, but I, I really respond um, to her black and white photographs. Uh, lots of landscape, um, different still life. Um, yeah, JD's, JD's work is really gorgeous. So if you'd like to spend a little time with JD's work, um, it is online. And then the last artist that we have is uh, Jay Youngdahl. Uh, Jay wasn't able to make it today, but he gave me a little something to say about, about the, the pieces. Uh, this one is called Fading Time. And then the second is called Arising from the Gold. So Jay said, both of these were came out of uh, the COVID pandemic period. Uh, the still life is part of a project to make such images using items in my apartment. During the pandemic year, I tried to save all the dried flowers from bouquets that were bought at the local farmer's market to brighten up the apartment space. These dried flowers were one of my first bouquets of spring. So there is the obvious meaning of new beauty and life coming out of the old. And given that for many, 2020 was a lost year, the passage of time seems especially meaningful. In this second piece, Arising from the Gold, it was taken a couple of blocks from his apartment in Oakland um, on a fall pandemic, socially distanced masked walk. The golden ginkgo leaves were, start, were startling, <clears throat> excuse me, in this very urban setting which is one of the amazing things about coastal California, flowers in the most urban spaces. The model Lily is seriously thinking about her mask and we have collected a number of different ones. And here there is the meaning of life and happiness arising from underlying beauty, even in the most unusual times. Uh, so this is uh, Jay Youngdahl. I'm gonna be doing a uh, two person show later in the summer in August. Um, where we're combining Jay's work with the work of uh, Leslie Bodzi, who um, has been in a number of um, emerge, uh, emerge Gallery exhibitions. Uh, so that is the um, Photographia show. Um, if you wanted to, I, and I encourage you all to spend a little time um, with each of the works, it's on um, as I said, artsy.net backslash emerge hyphen gallery hyphen NY. Uh, there are probably about 70 pieces or so in the show by 44 different artists. Uh, you can find out a little bit more um, about each piece there. Um, also have a look at some of the, the current show that's in the gallery right now, Something Blue. Uh, some really wonderful blue work um, in the show, all different styles, different mediums. Uh, so that's what we've got a messy desk, but that's what's going on um, at the gallery. Uh, this show will be up for one more week and then coming back in May with a collage show. Um, and again, the same with the photography show. And with most of my shows, I try to get all different ways that artists are using the theme um, or the medium um, of, of the show um, and give a nice representation of, of that. Um, so, um, yeah, have a look, spend a little time with some art. There's some really wonderful artists here in the Hudson Valley. Um, I'm so pleased to be able to exhibit their work um, and, and get to know them really. And, you know, many of them I consider my friends. So, um, I, again, I'm, I, I so appreciate um, everyone participating in this, in this virtual show. Um, Artsy has been... Um, uh, a really wonderful thing that I'm so glad um, that I was able to join uh, a couple of years ago. It's a, it's a site for brick and mortar galleries to um, basically sell the work that they represent to, to the world. Um, so with all of my shows, um, 
it's not limited now to just coming into this small gallery in Saugerties. It's everyone all, all over the world can spend a little time looking at art from the Hudson Valley and purchasing it. And people are buying <laughs> it and sending work all over. So um, again, thank you everyone that participated. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you so that much. Up. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Robert. Well, thank you, Robert. We'll see you all soon, okay? Okay, bye-bye.